Hello, everybody. This is Evan, founder and CEO of Gentatech, and we are back again with another high level overview. And today we are looking at Active Directory. If this is your first time tuning into our high level overview series, what we are doing is breaking down different aspects of IT in the simplest form possible with the intention to be able to deliver this information to non technical business owners, equipping them with the knowledge needed to make better decisions when it comes to making decisions that have a technical aspect to them, which let's face it, these days seem to be about every business decision possible. So with that said, we're gonna be digging into Active Directory. And uh, this may sound like hyperbole, but it's really not. It is a software that quite literally is the backbone to the entire American economy. That sounds insane and it sounds like it's not real, but when you learn that Active Directory is used by 95% of Fortune 500 companies, and then, you infer that uh, it's used by a lot of companies that don't fall into that Fortune 500 uh, realm, you can kind of quickly start to understand how important this piece of software is. Now, there are starting to become some alternatives, um, and they live on the cloud, uh, but that's neither here nor there. To this day, um, February 15th, 2023, 95% of Fortune 500 companies are still using Active Directory. So what is Active Directory? Well, the easy explanation is it's a database, okay? But before we really dig into it, let's give an example of Active Directory that we can all attach ourselves to. And it'll be a little bit easier to kind of understand what it is, how it works, and why it has such a big a place in uh, American economics. So let's think about this here. Have you ever been in a situation where, let's say we're in a high school, middle school, or maybe even elementary school, and you walk into a computer lab or your children, and there's a plethora of computers to pick from? Well. Because there's so many students, obviously you can't have a computer assigned specifically to you or yourself, and you have the ability to walk to any one of those computers, use your student login and your student password, and access your account. That is much different than how a computer works maybe at home. You have an account on that specific computer, and you need that particular computer to access your account. So the, the Active Directory is the first one there. Active Directory allows you, through an authentication process, allows you to access your network or your business resources from a multitude of devices, okay? And this is all done via databases. So let's go ahead and build out a situation here where Active Directory is being used, and it'll make a little bit more sense. So the first thing that we're gonna need is a server because Active Directory is always ran on a server. And this can't be any server. This has to be a Windows server, okay? So Active Directory is a Windows product. All right, there we go. So we have a Windows server, and this is a database in here, and uh, we have to be able to access this information from other devices. But what type of database is this? Well, it's a distributed one and a multi-master one. So a distributed database essentially is a database that gets distributed to multiple devices. That's the easiest way to think of it, the most foundational way to think of it. A multi-master database is a database that can be manipulated by multiple users, not just one. Okay, so we have a distributed multi-master database. Now, let's build this out to kind of see how this works. So let's build just a little small office here. And let's say in this office, uh, we have, I don't know, let's go four computers. So let's go workstations here. Perfect, and let's do four of these things. So we'll do one here. That's good. Two, three, and four. Fantastic, okay. Now, as we just mentioned, Active Directory gives us the ability to be one person and walk to either one of these machines and access our account. What I'm going to do for now to make this a little bit easier to understand is I'm going to pretend like these machines are accessed specifically by the same person. So what that means is uh, these people still retain the option to log on to, these, uh, to their account through different devices, but we're going to paint this picture in a different manner just because it's easier to understand. So let's say this computer here is accessed by the CEO. Let's say this computer here is accessed by the manager. Oh, goodness, here we go again. Yes. And let's say this computer here is accessed. Wow. Give me that. There we go. Is accessed by, um, let's go ahead and do a uh, employee. And then let's go ahead and do an intern. All right. Here we go. So, first and foremost, how would this CEO log into his account? So this is the computer in the CEO's office, we'll say. Obviously, the manager, employee, and intern are not really going to have access to the CEO's office. 
but this computer here is still going to be registered as a part of Active Directory. So when this CEO goes to log in, he's not going to be logging into an account that's built on this computer. What he's going to be doing is typing his credentials. That username and password are going to go up to this server here, this Active Directory server. This Active Directory server is going to authenticate, so check if the user and password, the username and password are valid. And then if so, that will go right back down here and allow him to log in. All right, so that's how that'll look. That is Active Directory. So if the manager needs to log in, he's also going to head over here to the server. Employee, over to the server. And the intern, over to the server. So this server here is authenticating all of these different users and giving them access then to employee resources. Now this becomes interesting because these are workstations in this example, but they don't have to be. These could very well be laptops. So we can start to see some of these use cases here. Let's say the CEO is going off on a trip. Well, the CEO can access company resources through his account on Active Directory anywhere in the world as long as the authentication is approved. That's one use case here. So now let's build this into a, uh, a more structured scenario to where we're accessing company resources. So let's say that we have uh, some storage here. All right, and within, within the storage, let's do one here. And we'll say this is C-suite storage. Okay, so this contains assets that should only be accessed by C-suite. Okay, so that's CEO, CFO, people like that. And these are business documents, um, legal documents, things that really cannot get out into the world. In fact, the type of things that are stolen when somebody successfully hacks a company, that all lives here. But we also have another database. And this database here is going to be, let's say, the employee database. And this needs to be accessed to grab, there we go. This needs to be accessed to grab, um, let's see, what kind of business is this? Let's say that this is a graphic design company, a marketing company, there we go. And let's say that all of our design materials are right here on this database. So obviously the employees are gonna be able to need to access this to do their job. All right, and then we also have an intern and we're going to only have two databases so we can show something cool that we can do with this intern here. Well, we already understand that we've went through a method of authentication using this server. So to clear this up here, let's make this a little bit easier to read. And then we'll go like this. There we go, just to get that out of the way and clear some room. So we're gonna start with the CEO. So the CEO has authenticated in, and this authentication now gives him the right to access this storage. But there is some type of process here, um, or I guess you can say, some type of wall, not a firewall, but just a wall. Oh, let's get a better one. We can get a better looking wall than that. There we go. And there is an authentication process that goes on right here, okay? And then let's go, who are you? Beautiful. And then let's make it a little bit easier to read. There we go, perfect. So now that we have the process of being authenticated into the account, and we wanna access some of these resources, well, we can try to do that. But first, we're going to have to run into this wall here. And this wall is going to run in another authentication process to see what type of security level we have. Are we somebody who is registered as a C-suite employee? Because in Active Directory, you can take your user and then you can give them a specific security level or a specific title that has security uh, ramifications that follow that title. Right, well, that's fantastic because now, if the employee, let's say, maybe wants to see if they have a raise coming, you know, whatever, whatever, the, whatever it is, whatever it is, and they try to access this, well, this system here can let them not do it. It can deny that access. And in addition to that, it'll log that login attempt so you can then go back, have a conversation with that employee, maybe train them, or maybe see if there's something nefarious going on. Regardless, it will let you know who's trying to access this information here, okay? So then, the CEO gets approved and he's good to go. He has a lane to access this storage. That is fantastic, okay? Now the same thing here applies to the employee storage. And we're going to pull the intern in here so you can get a little bit of a better understanding of uh, how useful this can be. So our manager, let's say he's over here with the C-suites and has the same amount of access so he's good to go there. But now we're an employee and we just want to get some work done, all right? So let's say I'm uh, at home, working from home. Maybe I'm at the office. This is a marketing company. Um, so some of the other employees uh, that are helping me do the same job, let's say maybe a Photoshop guy has uploaded some content that I'm going to need to upload to a website. 
So then it's the exact same process. This employee here will log in. And we, let's do another who are you. There we go. We'll change the color here so it's easier to get a hold of. Okay. So this employee will attempt to log in and he'll be met right here with an authentication demand. Okay. And this authentication demand often runs in the background. If he has been approved by the IT admin or whoever's running Active Directory to access said uh, d database or said storage pool, he will be allowed to do so. Okay. But now this is where it becomes interesting. So this intern here is being trained by this employee. And this intern is not hired into the company fully. Maybe they're in a probation, probationary period, or maybe by design, they're just meant to be there for six weeks, eight weeks, whatever it may be. So now we can give using Active Directory, this intern here, the ability to also go through the same authentication process, right? So they want to access some company resources under the employee resources which they're allowed to do. They'll come here. They'll be met with an authentication request. And then just like everybody else that is approved, they'll be able to access all of this information, just like so. This is great. This looks fantastic. But now what happens when this intern leaves and it's time for them to go? Well, the stipulations that allow this intern to access this information was simply an account, a username and a password that's stored within the Active Directory server itself. So if we have employee turnover, we don't have to go chase this intern down and ask them to delete anything. We don't have to go chase their device down. We can literally go into the Active Directory database itself and just remove that intern from Active Directory, then eliminating any potential that they have access to not only that account, but the ability to log in and access resources anywhere on the company. So that is really the easiest way to kind of explain Active Directory. It's going to control users, which is going to be the CEO, manager, employee, and intern. It's going to control computers or devices, which you can also register under Active Directory, and you, you're going to need to do that. And then we have security groups that is going to determine the rules sitting here at these uh, little bodyguards here, these, these little walls, okay? And then so your main ones are going to be access control, um, authentication of users and computers, and then very, very importantly, the ability to, to, to track and audit um, unauthorized attempts to access things. So now you can start to see exactly why Active Directory plays such a big role and has such a big space as a piece of software in our economic livelihood, because this is the way that banks and governments and businesses all across the world protect their data and control access to the information that's associated with the job. And that's pretty much it, folks. Now, with that said, Active Directory goes so, so, so deep. You can do so many things. It is really extremely useful. There are other softwares that are coming out that are looking to replicate the same ethos, the same approach, and the same type of things that you can do, really focusing on, on authentication and security. And some of them are pretty good. Um, you know, Microsoft themselves have, have uh, propped up situations such as Azure to where it's replicating this, but it's not necessarily Active Directory. With that said, Active Directory is ran on premise. So this Windows server here is going to have to be a piece of hardware that is somewhere, traditionally, I should say, that is somewhere within the premise of the business itself. And then you can have backup uh, pieces of, of AD um, in the cloud and, and some other additional places. But that is essentially how it works there. Thank you for tuning in. This has been another high level overview. If you have any questions about Active Directory, or anything that we have spoken about today, please feel free to reach out, reach out to us at info at gentatech.com. If you would love to work with us, have any complaints, or just kind of want to have a conversation, I invite all of that. Again, that is info at gentatech.com. We appreciate you tuning in for another high-level overview, and we will see you next time.